Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Modeling the Photosynthesis Equation video. I know you are really excited to learn how to model photosynthesis, and hopefully this video will help you understand that process. Mr. Gurney, and I'm going to walk you through some of the steps here, what photosynthesis is, simplify it a little bit, and I'm going to show you a paper model that I have that will help you understand this process. First, let's look at what photosynthesis actually is. I have this diagram here, and photosynthesis is essentially a plant taking in sunlight, taking in some carbon dioxide, taking in some water, and then putting out some oxygen and some sugar. It's as simple as that. Take in light energy from the sun, carbon dioxide, water, put out sugar and oxygen. And now this can be thought of a lot of different ways. You have this diagram here. One way we want to think about it, especially when modeling the equation, is by looking at it as a chemical reaction. So what is a chemical reaction? Let's look at what this would look like in that form. A reaction's almost like a math problem. You have some, some things on one side of the equal sign, some things on the other side of the equal sign. In this case, our equal sign is this arrow. So you have some carbon dioxide, plus some water, plus some light energy, and all that's going to equal some sugar and some oxygen. You're probably thinking, well, how does that even happen? And why do we want to model it? We want to look at the molecular level of what's going in to this process, and that's what we're trying to model. So let's look at this on a little bit deeper level. The things that go in to photosynthesis are called the reactants, or the things that go into any chemical reaction are called the reactants. They are what react. What comes out are the products. That's what's being produced. In photosynthesis, you have the stuff that goes in the plant over here, the reactants, and the stuff that comes out on that side, the products. Let's compare this to our diagram we started off with. And if we put a line here, it might help. We have carbon dioxide, CO2. That's our carbon dioxide. We have H2O, our water, right here. We have sunlight energy right here. That's everything going in to the plant. We have glucose or sugar. Those terms, we can interchange those for what we're talking about. And we also have oxygen. This is what's being produced, the products, what's coming out of the plant. So what goes in, what comes out. This is what we're going to try to model. We're not going to try to model the plant. We are going to try to model the photosynthesis chemical reaction, this process. So let's look at that even deeper. We have CO2. This is considered a molecule. It's multiple atoms together. What other molecules are in here? We have CO2, we have H2O, we have glucose, and the last one we have oxygen. There's only four molecules that make up this whole photosynthesis equation. Now let's look at that on an even deeper level. We have carbon that makes up part of this CO2 molecule, but what other atoms make up that molecule? We have some oxygen, carbon and oxygen. Let's look at the water molecule. We have H and O. We have oxygen again. We also have hydrogen. So on this whole side, the reactant side, there's only three types of atoms, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. I'll look on the product side. There's carbon, oxygen, Hydrogen. That's all that's over here, too. So the reality is we have all this stuff happening on the reactant side, producing all these things that happen on the product side, and it all just is made up of three different elements, some carbon, some oxygen, some hydrogen, some carbon, some oxygen, some hydrogen. If we're going to make a model of this equation, we should start off by modeling carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. So when we're looking at chemical reaction, we have reactants and products. You've seen the arrow, all that means is equals in this case. What happens on the reactant side equals what happens on the product side. 
And another way you can think of that is the number of atoms on this side equal the number of atoms on this side. If this was a math problem, you could say 1 plus 2 equals 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 equals 1 plus 2. 5 equals 3 plus 2. It's the same thing on either side. Now, let's look at what the number of atoms actually mean. So we know we have carbon on that side, and those carbon have to equal the carbon on this side. We have oxygen on this side. That has to equal the oxygen on this side. We have hydrogen. That has to equal the hydrogen. So the number of carbon atoms on the reactant side has to be the same as the number of carbon atoms on the product side. The number of oxygen atoms on the reactant side has to be the same as the, as the number of oxygen atoms on the product side. And the number of hydrogen atoms on the reactant side has to be the same as the number of hydrogen atoms on the product side. Like I said, we're trying to create a model to represent this, represent photosynthesis. So I have some paper that will help us understand. I have some C's that will help you. I have some O's that will help you. And I have some H's. Because photosynthesis is just made up of some C's for carbon, some O's for oxygen, some H's for hydrogen. And that's all that's in photosynthesis. Let's see if this can we can break this down and actually model this. So I'm going to go between the camera view and what's on the screen. Okay, let's under, see if we can understand each molecule first. We said there are four molecules in the photosynthesis equation. Carbon dioxide, CO2, water, H2O, sugar or glucose, C6, H12, O6, and oxygen, O2. If we look at this CO2 molecule and we want to actually break that down to the number of atoms, that would be one C, two O's, one carbon atom, two oxygen atoms. So CO2. If we did that in paper form, that would be C, one C, two O's. Water, H2, two H's, one O. We did that in our paper form, two H's, one O. This is where it may get complicated, but this is still one molecule. So one molecule of glucose has one, two, three, four, five, six, C6 carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hydrogen, H12 hydrogen, one, two, three, four, five, six oxygen. And with my paper model, that would look something like this. Okay. Now, oxygen, O2, it's just two oxygen atoms. My paper model, it would look like this. And the reason I'm showing you this paper model is because you will end up creating, with your project that you will eventually get into, a model using paper or some other sort of um, some other, other sort of material. Okay. Let's go back to the actual equation. And if we use our paper version, you could see that CO2, CO2 would look something like that. And I'm going to put it on the paper right here. CO, that's O2. So that would look like that. CO2. And that gets added, the plus sign, to H2O. If I was going to make H2O in the paper form, it would look like that. H2O plus solar energy. Hey, look, I have some solar energy in my paper model. Plus or going to equals C6H12O6. I'm not going to show you that right here just yet. And then it goes to plus oxygen, 
O2. Now, there's something we need to look at, though. When we are writing out this equation, when we're modeling this equation, when we're trying to show the molecules of this equation, it's not just CO2 plus H2O plus solar energy equals C6, H12O6 plus O2. If you notice, there are numbers in front of the molecules. So we should move those numbers down. We have 6 CO2, 6 H2O plus solar energy, C6H12O6. There's no number in front of that, plus 6O2. But what does that actually mean? So I want to start with the CO2. I'm going to grab some carbon. I'm going to grab some oxygen and another oxygen. This is CO2, but we want 6 CO2. So what will we have to do to make 6 CO2? Well, it wouldn't be just putting a 6 in front of it. The reality is 6 CO2 would be 6 CO2 molecules. Here's one CO2 molecule. Here's two CO2 molecules. So I'm modeling that molecule, and there's six of them. So I want to create a model that looks like this. There's three CO2 molecules. One, two, three. Here's four CO2 molecules. One, two, three, four. Here's five CO2 molecules, one, two, three, four, five. We need six CO2 molecules. I'm going to move this down and put my sixth one right up here. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six CO2 molecules. Great. What do we do with that? Well, we're just showing what that actually looks like. When we see CO2, we often think of just one CO2. But six CO2 is actually one, two, three, four, five, six carbon molecule or atoms. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 oxygen atoms. So six CO2 is not just one CO2, it's all of this. Okay, so let's take what we have here and let's put what I just made on our chart. Take that away. Now we have six CO2s. Okay, I'm going to move that to the side, and now I want to focus on the H2Os. Remember, we have H2O for one H2O. In this case, we want six H2Os. So what would that look like? Well, luckily, I've already placed them out for us. It would look like this. H2O, that's one water molecule. Two H is one O. Look at that, H2O. There's two water molecules. One, two. H2O, there's three water molecules. H2O, there's four. H2O, there's five. H2O, there's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's take away the six H2O and let's put in a plus sign and six H2Os. So now we're taking this written model, this written equation, turning it into a model representing all the atoms. Okay. So six CO2 plus six H2O, I'm going to move the sunlight down, plus solar energy or sunlight equals, and let's take a look at this side, move this out of the way, It equals C6H12O6. This is one single molecule. Just like the H2O, one of these is just one molecule. This entire thing of C6H12O6 is one molecule. There is no number in front of this. So that means we only have one of these molecules. So that's going to stay the same. But you need to add six O2s. So let's see what that might look like. Luckily, I already have that made. 
I'm going to move these down though. Then let's look at 1O2. Here's an oxygen O2 molecule. Oxygen atom, oxygen atom. O2 looks like that. We need six. There are one, two O2s, three O2s, four O2s, five O2s, and I'll look at this one at the top here, six O2s. These are in pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can now take away the six O2 over here. We're at a plus sign in there, and that's what it would look like. Okay. Move this out of the way. So we took our photosynthesis equation, and we then were able to create a model using paper to showcase that. So I had my paper carbons, I had my paper hydrogens, and then I also had my paper oxygens. Okay. Now, if we think back, we said the reactants equal the products, right? And in this case, we have C, O, and H is on this side, C, O, and H is on this side. The number of atoms on this side has to equal the number of atoms on this side. The number of atoms on the reactant side has to equal the number of atoms on the product side. So let's see if it does. How many carbons do we have on the reactant side? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the equal sign. We have six carbon atoms on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Guess what? Six on that side. Let's look at the oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But we're looking at the whole reactant side. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now what about the oxygen on this side? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Look at that. That makes sense. Now let's look at the hydrogen. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And now let's look at the hydrogen on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Hey, guess what, guys? The number of atoms on the reactant side equals the number of atoms on the product side. That means this equation is balanced. Things in nature often want to be balanced. Photosynthesis is no exception to that. So after the sugar is made, you're still left with all these extra oxygen, so that's why you have oxygen that is produced. Okay, so we have this equation, C6O2, or C6, um, sorry, 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus sunlight equals C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Remember, reactants equal the products. In this case, the reactants equal the products. So the goal of this is for you to understand how to model that equation, okay? In this case, that can be a few different things, but the easiest way to look at that is by looking at this model right here. And if I were to create a model, a physical model, I could use something like paper like this, or I could replace this O with something else. Let's say I wanted to use marbles in some sort of physical mo model, and every marble I had represented an oxygen. And then I could use something different to represent the hydrogen. I could use then something different to represent the carbon. As long as all the carbon atoms are the same, hydrogen, oxygen, then we'd be good. But this right here, what you see on your screen, is a physical model, a paper model that represents photosynthesis. All right, guys, thank you for watching. If you have questions, let your teacher know. Have a wonderful day.